The Whirlpool factory in Amiens makes washing machines. Not for much longer, though. The workers are fighting to save their jobs, but they know it's a lost cause. Next year, production will move to Poland, where labour is cheaper and labour laws more liberal. The battle for the Whirlpool factory at Amiens really encapsulates what this whole campaign is about. It's a straight fight between the globalists and the nationalists. And Emmanuel Macron is not equivocating here. He is on the side of globalization. Amiens is Emmanuel Macron's hometown. He came here last week with a stark message that he couldn't promise to save their jobs. It didn't go down well. Unemployment in France remains stubbornly at 10%. Protesting is done in a certain style. There's beer and pork chops. Mr. Macron, the local boy made good, is not popular. La, la, la grande société de, du grand monde. Euh, la, seule, la seule qui parle de nous depuis le début, euh, c'est Marine Le Pen. Et la plupart de votre collègue, il, il va voter pour Le Pen ah, euh, Ici, oui, beaucoup. 80%, oui, c'est sûr. In an era of rising populism, Emmanuel Macron is that most despised of creatures, a former banker turned technocrat, a pro-EU, pro-immigration liberal. And yet, He's the favourite to win on Sunday. So who is he really? Aquilino Morel was a senior advisor to President Hollande when a 34-year-old Macron appeared as if out of nowhere to take the second most powerful job at the Elysee Palace. He was seductive, charming and clever. He had this characteristic qui est assez singulière, d'être à la fois indiscutably a member of the elite, Et en même temps, pour le, la, la grande majorité des citoyens, il paraissait neuf. Neuf parce que il n'avait jamais été élu. Je suis nouveau et je vais vous débarrasser de toute cette vieille classe politique que vous ne supportez plus et dont vous, vous ne voulez plus. Donc il a joué des deux, très intelligemment. France is divided. Emmanuel Macron is running on a program of economic liberalisation, reform of the labour law, shrinking the state. Marine Le Pen wants tariffs and increased welfare spending. These are the battle lines in an election in which neither of the two traditional parties has a candidate. Macron owes his rise to François Hollande, who adopted him as his political son. Over the past five years, Gérard Davet chronicled his presidency, interviewing him more than 60 times. When Macron left the Socialist Party to run for president, Hollande saw it as a betrayal. He has a face of an angel, but inside he's not an angel. Inside he's very ambitious and he wants to succeed. And uh, if, he had, if he had to kill the father, he could do it. He did it. Uh, he's like a Machiavelli, a Machiavelli from the, this century. Emmanuel Macron, of course, isn't the first successful politician to exhibit a ruthless streak. But what bothers some people about him is precisely the speed of his success. The fact that he appears to have come from nowhere. In Amiens, the provincial town north of Paris, where he grew up, we visited the Lycée de la Providence. It was here that he met the woman he would later marry, his drama teacher, 24 years his senior. Uh, Renaud Dartvel and the young Emmanuel Macron were drama students together. He was friendly, he, he, easy to talk to, but he was also, uh, in a way, secretive. They and, shared a passion uh, for the theatre, but on the subject of his secret love, Macron never confided in his friend. In fact, we never spoke about it. And I think maybe we were good friends because I was not the type of guy to ask about this kind of things. Uh, like everyone we talked to, Dartvel speaks of Macron's charm. But is it genuine or is he still acting? Both, really deeply both, because his desire to, to help people, to uh, help his country, to serve his country, is bound up with his desire to be centre stage. 
In Amiens town centre, Emmanuel Macron has his supporters. But if he wins the presidency, he will do so outside of the party system and without a parliamentary base. And that is likely to be a problem. Recent attempts to reform the labour law have been both ineffective and unpopular. If Macron becomes president, expect more protests. But if he does, no one will be able to say they weren't warned. Vous aviez des présidents en France qui faisaient la politique inverse de celle pour laquelle ils avaient été élus. Ce qui rendait les citoyens fous furieux, exaspérés et, si vous voulez, à bout de, à bout de, 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 de résistance et de nerfs. Là, Macron, il va faire, pour le meilleur comme pour le pire, il va faire la politique pour laquelle il aura été élu et la politique qu'il aura sollicité de ses concitoyens. Ça, c'est quelque chose de nouveau. Across Europe, the old duopoly of centre-left and centre-right is looking vulnerable. In France, it may have had its day. The new battle between the globalists and the nationalists will not be concluded with this election, whoever wins on Sunday.